on, on Ara. Um, I wish to thank the senators for giving me the opportunity uh, to address the matters raised in this private uh, member's motion on school transport. Before I address the specific issues raised, I would like to provide an outline of the extent of the school transport scheme. The school transport scheme was established in 1968. It was created to facilitate access to primary and post-primary education for children who, because of where they reside, might otherwise have difficulty in attending school regularly. I am deeply conscious of the immense service that the scheme provides for families right across the country. The scheme is a significant operation managed by Bus Éireann on behalf of the department. In the 21-22 school year, over 105,000 children, including over 15,500 children with special educational needs, were transported on a daily basis to primary and post-primary schools throughout the country. To date, in the current school year, there are approximately 124,000 children availing of transport on the mainstream primary and post-primary school transport schemes, and approximately 17,300 children availing of transport on the school transport scheme for children with special education needs, such that a total of 141,300 children travelling to school on the school transport service scheme this year. Under the terms of the primary and post-primary school transport scheme, and this is an important factor, children and young people are eligible for transport at primary level where they reside not less than 3.2 kilometres from and where they are attending their nearest national school, and at post-primary level where they reside not less than 4.8 kilometres from and are attending their nearest post-primary school or education centre as determined by the Department of Air and having regard to ethos and language. In addition, pending completion of the outcome of the full review of the school transport scheme, temporary alleviation measures at post-primary level are being continued for the 22-23 school year. Under these measures, transport will be provided for post-primary pupils who are eligible for transport to their nearest school and are attending their second nearest school and who applied by the 29th of April and registered for a ticket by the 29th of July. It is important to emphasise that there is an eligibility criteria um, in terms of access to the school transport system. That has always been the way. It was the way in previous years. It is the way currently. The eligibility criteria has not changed. Under the terms of the school transport scheme for children with special education needs, children are eligible for transport where they have special education needs arising from a diagnosed disability and are attending the nearest recognised mainstream school, special class or special school, uh, that is or can be resourced to meet their special education needs. Eligibility is determined following consultation with the National Council for Special Education through its network of special education needs organisers. As the Senators will be aware, as an emergency cost of living measure, Government announced funding for the waiving of school transport scheme fees for the 22-23 school year as part of a wider package of cost of living measures. This created a saving of up to €650 Euro for parents at a time when measures were announced to reduce the cost to families for school transport services. These measures were, in addition to the reductions in the family cap that were announced by government in February of 22, to mitigate the cost of living and remove um, the cost of ticket charges for the 22-23 school year. School transport ticket registration for the 22-23 school year closed on the 29th of July this year, by which time almost 130,000 applications and registrations were received for mainstream school transport. The online account management system, known as the Family Portal, which has been closed since registrations closed on the 29th of July, reopened on the th uh, 25th of August. Where applications have been processed, the reopening of the portal will enable account holders to check the status of their own individual application. Whilst the reopening of the portal also facilitates a late application process, it is important for such families to note that the application deadline for the 22-23 year was the 29th of April 22 and that the deadline to confirm registration was the 29th of July 22. Any application completed after this date is deemed a late application and therefore many school transport services are already operating at full capacity. Late applications will only be assessed after all on-time applications have been processed and there is no guarantee of places for late applicants. Already over 124,000 tickets for the mainstream scheme alone have been issued to applicants for the 2022-2023 school year. At the start of the last school year, there were approximately 103,600 children carried on mainstream school transport services. 
So already in the region of 20,400 additional mainstream places have been created. The temporary waiving of fees has led to an unprecedented expansion of the scheme with many more eligible and concessionary applicants receiving tickets um, uh, than ever before. There has been an increase in tickets allocated across all counties across the country, with an increase of 18% in the number of tickets issued to eligible pupils compared to the start of the 2021-22 school year, and an increase of one-third in the number of tickets issued to concessionary pupils compared to the start of the 21-2022 school year. And I think that is an important factor. There is actually an increase in the number of those who have qualified for concessionary places on buses this year, an increase by one third. The necessary funding required to waive the fee for families for the current school year and the funding to provide the additional services required to cater for the increased demand for school bus tickets is being provided by my department. Already this expansion has cost an additional 40 million above last year's costings. Notwithstanding this, I do acknowledge that the huge increase in applications has led to frustration over delays in issuing and accessing tickets in some instances. I can assure you that Bus Erin will continue to work intensively in all regions to process applications and to issue tickets. For this year, and in line with normal practice, all eligible children who completed the application and ticket registration process on time for the 2022-2023 school year will be accommodated on school transport services where such services are in operation. This notwithstanding, I am conscious that there are families who are not eligible for the scheme, but who have depended on the service in previous years. And this is an issue that I am addressing with Minister McGrath in the context of the upcoming budget. The department is also continuing to progress a review of the school transport scheme, which includes an examination of the current scheme and how it currently operates, its broader effectiveness and sustainability, and that it might adequately support the provision of services to students and their families. The review encompasses the school transport scheme for children with special education needs. The review of the primary and post-primary school transport schemes will examine each element of the schemes and include eligibility criteria, trends, costs, cost drivers and overall effectiveness in meeting the objectives of the scheme. The review will also examine the potential for integration of different strands of the scheme and a more coordinated approach with other governmental departments that might also use transport or provide transport services. Wider considerations relating to operation of the scheme are taking place in the current phase of the review. As part of the current phase of the review, the Technical Working Group has undertaken extensive consultation, including running a public survey for parents and guardians and students who use the service and those who do not use the service but would like to. These engagements have yielded extensive data for consideration. The group has also consulted with a broad array of stakeholders, including schools, special education interest groups, industry representatives and other government departments. One of the findings of the stakeholder engagement process is that the school transport scheme is highly valued by families and that families, particularly those living in rural Ireland, rely heavily on the scheme to get their children to school where there is a lack of public transport alternatives. Another key finding is that the scheme is viewed as a key factor in supporting climate change measures and there was support for increasing capacity on school transport, which in turn will reduce car journeys and congestion at schools and in towns. Whilst work on the review was impacted somewhat by the challenges of the pandemic and the impact of the current conflict in Ukraine, it is anticipated that the final phases of the review will be completed shortly with recommendations on the future operation of the department's school transport scheme. The steering group will continue to report to me on an interim basis as the review progresses. With regard to the retirement age of school bus drivers, it is a bus errand company policy that normal retirement age for all bus errand staff is currently 66 years of age. However, bus errand part-time school bus drivers and drivers nominated by private operators who operate service as part of the school transport scheme may continue to perform in the role provided they hold the, uh, the requisite license and satisfy an annual medical examination until they retire at uh, 70 years of age. This policy and criteria is applied to all drivers who provide school transport services on behalf of Bus Éireann equally. The age limit on school bus drivers was increased to 70 years a number of years ago. 
while Bus Éireann have informed the Department there is no plan to increase the age limit further at this time, the matter will of course continue to be kept under review. I can assure the Senators that my officials will continue to engage with Bus Éireann, as they currently do, with regard to all aspects of the operation of the school transport scheme. In addition, quarterly, strategic and monthly operational meetings will continue to be held throughout the year to discuss operational and strategic matters including financial matters, fleet and other resource requirements, scheme delivery and other such matters that arise to ensure continued and effective operation of this very significant scheme. Before I conclude, Senators, I would like again to take the opportunity to point out that the announcement um, as it was made was made as part of a cost of living um, uh, procurement or a provision for families and it is a considerable saving for families for many up to 650 euro. It was announced on the basis of the criteria that currently exists and did not change and the criteria that exists is eligibility provided that um, a pupil in primary school lives um, uh, 3.2 kilometres from their, uh, their school or at post primary 4.8 kilometres from their nearest or next nearest school. Um, all of those who have met that eligibility criteria have been provided for and more than 124,000 of them uh, have been provided for this year as opposed to 103,000 being provided for last year and that is a significant increase of more than 20% additional capacity and it is also free of charge. There is an issue with concessionaries. Concessionaries are those who receive seats on uh, the basis of availability once those who are eligible have been provided for. This has not changed this year and those who are concessionaries provided there is capacity have received uh, seats on buses this year and there has been one third of an increase in concessionary tickets this year. There have been issues with the school bus transport system. I recognise that and I am the first minister to instigate a root and branch review of the entire bus transport system which specifically will address eligibility criteria. Previous ministers who served in my department did not do so in the past number of years. I think it's important to remember that. And equally so, I would say to you, in terms of addressing the issues for this cohort of concessionaries who are not eligible under the present scheme to be on the bus, but have depended on it previously, I have opened discussions with Minister Michael McGrath as part of the, the budget context to see if there is scope to ensure that some financial provision can be made to alleviate the situation for the families that find themselves specifically in that situation, having previously been concessionaries and having uh, capacity available on a bus. And those discussions are ongoing. But again, I would say to you, these are individuals, and I do not take from the difficulty and the challenge that it provides for families. And it is for that reason that I did instigate an entire review of the process, recognising that there are other ways and better ways of providing the, 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 um, providing the service. And that review has involved engagement with more than 8,000 parents, 2,000 students, bus providers, bus operators, our European counterparts, um, to, to look at best practice in other, in, in other jurisdictions. And that review is nearing completion. And in the short term, this measure was introduced to alleviate, as I say, cost of living pressure on families. And I will take the opportunity, and I am in ongoing discussions with Minister McGrath in terms of the specific cohort who now currently find them outside the loop. Specifically, I just want to refer also to a question around a special education and, and appreciate, uh, Senator, um, you, you raising that. Um, those who are um, uh, availing of the school transport um, scheme from a special education point of view do so and have consistently done so free of charge. Um, there may well be challenges in terms of recruiting staff. I, I want to be fair and say to you that this challenge in terms of recruiting staff is not unique to the transport system at this point in time. We're seeing similar in business, we're seeing similar in hospitality. But we are working through that with Bus Éireann and children, as I say, um, um, uh, uh, special uh, um, educational needs are being provided for and free of charge uh, as previous as is now. And in fact, there has been an increase um, in provision for special education needs in terms of transport due largely to the um, large number of additional classes that we have in placements and everything else and, and that is a positive. So Senators I want to thank you for your um, ongoing interest and commitment in this area. I want to thank you for um, the um, issues that you have highlighted. I know this is of huge interest across the 
the floor here. Um, I want to assure you uh, that we are continuing to work on it. We have had no choice but to abide by the eligibility criteria at this point. There is another opportunity to look at it uh, in its broadest sense when the review is completed. And in the short term, for those who were uh, outside of the loop, not eligible this year, and are concessionaries previously where there is capacity, I am engaged with Minister Michael McGrath to see what scope there is in the upcoming budget. Thank you, Senators.